Young Sisters. We are all about exercising our minds today. It's Sisterhood and on the show today we have invited two extraordinary authors to tell us about their books and what inspires them. We'll also find out from the sisters about their favorite books and why they love reading so much. Stay tuned ladies, let's go to a land far, far away. and welcome to today's installment of Sisterhood. It's National Library Week between the 22nd and 29th of March and we have decided to bring in amazing authors in studio today. It has been proven that reading helps in improving our knowledge to a large extent, helping us relax and become more confident in communication. Let's not forget the pleasures that reading provides and you get to use your imagination and disappear to a world far, far away. I'm so ready to go into a world of my own. We have two wonderful authors in the studio today who will tell us more about their books and why they are so passionate about reading. We'll also find out how you can go about writing your own book and the sisters on the go tell us which books they are currently reading. Yes guys, it is jam-packed so today because we'll also be giving you our sisterhood top five books to read. Okay, let's meet our authors, Lorian and Nikki. Welcome to the show, sisters. It's lovely to have you on the show. Oh, thanks. thanks. Now, let's start with first things first. Please introduce yourself to the viewers and then you tell us about the books that you've written. Cool. Um, my name is Lorraine Clements. I wrote Mushy Peas on Toast, which I bought out in December 2008. Mm -hmm. um, a sort of local novel, Bridget Jonesy, Sex in the City, perhaps, um, of Johannesburg. Very local book. Oh, very nice. And my name is Nikki Temkin and I'm a journalist and I've just brought out, it's actually the second book of its kind, it's called Chic Josie, The Savvy Style Companion and it's a book of where to go, what to do, what's happening in Joburg. Oh, oh very awesome. nice. Thank you. So now, to actually get yourself to write a whole book, it must mean you love writing and where did that love begin? We'll start with you, Lauren. Well, it began pretty much as soon as I could write. Um, since I was six, I've been writing my own little books, um, stories, diaries, and then I started blogging in 2004, still relatively unknown in South Africa as a sort of medium in which to write. started blogging. Um, I was a journalist as well for a while, so it's always been around for me. Really. The big thing for yeah. you. Yeah. And you, Nikki? Pretty much like Lorian, I've always loved writing and I've always enjoyed making up stories, um, as you can imagine, um, as a young child. And I've been a journalist for the last 12 years and I've written for a variety of different publications, magazines, newspapers and television as well. So it's culminated in me wanting to publish books. Alright, so now I'm going to direct the question at you first, Nikki. When did you decide that uh, you want to write books and get it published? She mentioned started writing at six, but when did you actually decide you want to publish books? I think that as a writer, um, generally you want, you, there comes a point in your career as a journalist when you want to publish something that's less transient, less sort of ephemeral, less passing than a magazine or a newspaper that you read and then it gets thrown away or it sits in a doctor's office. Mm -hmm. I think you want to publish something that has longevity and shelf life. So the next obvious step for you, if you're interested in doing that, is to publish a book. So the next step is then to find out what am I interested, what kind of book am I interested in publishing. This book came to me rather than me coming to the book. Yeah. It uh, started with a friend of mine called Nadine Rubin, who was the editor of Elle magazine about 10 years ago or less than that and she had the idea of doing a little guidebook to Johannesburg because that had never been done before and she asked me if I'd be interested in doing it with her because it was a lot of work and a lot of research and of course I said yes I'd love to so that was the first book in 2005 Nadine now lives in New York so I've done the second update which was released last year on my own Oh, oh, very nice. Awesome. Now, I just want to ask a question mm. before you go ahead. You guys are into two very different types of writing. You do, you do more of the journalism type of approach and you write stories more kind of thing. Yeah, yes and no. Um, I was also a journalist, so I've done all of that as well. And I have to agree with Nikki that you, you want something a little bit more transient, something yeah. that's going to have longevity. I agree with her 100% there. Which do you um, prefer? Um, now, I'd say the writing that I do above and beyond my book are columns. So I'm a columnist, sort of full on, um, on well on the side really, yeah. a part-time job now. But um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's just a matter of bringing something more to the table, I think. That's All right. Me, yeah. 
Now, Nikki, if our viewers out there aren't really into writing novels and uh, publishing books, how else can they get their writing out there? I think that if you're really interested in being a writer, the first thing that you have to do is, and I had a, a teacher when I was at university, a wonderful man, he said the first thing you have to do if you want to be a writer is to write. There's no point no. sitting around and saying, I want to be a writer and I want to make up stories or I want to write books or I want to research this and not doing it. So the first no. thing is to actually just start writing, put your pen to paper, put your finger on your keyboard and just write and yeah. see what comes out. And it's strange. And I agree as well. Yeah. A lot of people sort of talk about it and go, oh, you know, a lot of people have come up to me and gone, I want to write a book too. Mm -hmm. It's blood, sweat and tears. It's yeah. not easy. Yeah. It's it took me three years to write mine. Especially doing it in your spare time, hey, Lauren, yeah. like you were, having yeah. a full time job and then me too, you exactly. know? Two o'clock in the morning, yeah. editing the same piece of work mm -hmm. over and over again. It's mm -hmm. not, it sounds glamorous, mm -hmm. it's not. But if you love it enough, you'll, you'll be able to do it. And how do they get the writing out there? Do they do blogging? Um, there are various ways, yeah. and with the advent of the internet and the popularity of it, there's so many ways now to get your writing out there. I mean, like Laurie, you can mm -hmm. become popular yeah. and get a following of people who love the things that you say and your thoughts on yeah. different subjects. Although mine was an accident, I must say that. <laughs> <laughs> I never imagined a book to come out. You must say that, you planned it very beautifully. <laughs> yeah, it was all orchestrated behind the scenes. Yeah. Only when you show not It just happened by accident, but that is a very good way to do it because publishers do crawl the net mm -hmm. to look for fresh talents and, and you know see what they can find. Yeah. So to start a blog costs nothing. Mm -hmm. It's a three-step process. Yeah. Very easy to start a blog and get going and see if people pick it up. Yeah. So that's yeah. the one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is to actually start writing something and have an outline for an idea and then actually approach publishing yeah. houses which is what I did um, with your idea and then obviously if you're already a published writer then you they can look at some of your work and see that you can write yeah. if you're not a published writer then get published yeah mm -hmm. send Do your work whatever you can, can. Yeah. exactly and don't be up. proactive yeah so tell me what were some of the challenges you guys faced when writing your book or trying to get it published, we'll start with you, Lorraine. Um, you've got to just be quite sort of objective on what they're going to do and grow a thick skin and, and realize that there's a reason for the editing and that they mm. bring out the best product for you to possibly. Yeah. And so are you. So, mm. yeah. I think and that's just for you. I think that journalism or writing of any kind is like any other industry. It's a school of hard knocks, and you'll find that your best advice comes sometimes in a very harsh way mm. you know I mean I remember working at Elle magazine 10 years ago as a features writer and handing something in to the editor and him th yeah. giving it back to me with all of the these red, red things just yeah. crossed out everywhere mm. and mm. little horrible comments in the you know just yeah. like being back at school yeah. and, and really if you, if you think it's yeah. amazing but you know well. what that actually makes you a better writer it makes Such you a better writer and it's a confidence thing so every yeah. time you write something you get better and better at it perhaps you study that perhaps you're teaching it to yourself whatever it is mm. it's a it's a matter of confidence yeah. and like Lauren said well. you cannot take it personally people aren't giving you feedback yeah. to be nasty they're doing it to help you actually improve yeah. your writing yeah. awesome okay. I'm going to look back at some of the things I wrote at Varsity that I thought were amazing Mm. You know, like this is artwork in the making yeah. and I look at it now and I think, well look, it's good, I can see I've grown. So you do, you grow with that sort you know, of process. And, and like anything know. else, I think the thing to remember about publishing your writing, whatever it is, is that it's not like working in a shop where you, you're selling something and you get paid right away. There's oh, often yeah. a delay between handing your work in and getting published. Sometimes if you work for magazines, it takes three months mm. from wow. the time that you write something till you see it in print. And you may only get paid that yeah. month too. It is so a Love. It's a lot of very it is a much, of love. Um, yeah. okay. you've got to wait. All right. When it comes to the business side of things, do you make a lot of money as authors? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> we were discussing. just discussing this backstage. Um, yes. Um, Laurie, you go yeah, first. Okay, I'll give you my opinion on it. I think, look, we, we're still quite we're an emerging market when it comes to literacy and, and publishing in general in South Africa. Um, however, it can be done. Um, but, you know, I'll speak for myself. I'm not J.K. Rowling and I'm not um, Spud. I'm not John Thunder Yeah. Well. So um, I think they've done really well and, they've, and it, it's really been successful for them. But I, it, it's very difficult to get to that stage and I think they're the lucky few so I wouldn't bank on it it's not it's not it's not a job that's going to sort of get you on a cruise ship in the Mediterranean for the rest of your life <laughs> 
but um, who knows? It might do. You yeah. Can, you know, it, it depends. It really depends. That's my take, anyway. Nikki. Yeah. I tend to agree with Lorian, and let's just separate the two things so there's no confusion. You mm -hmm. can definitely make a living and a good right. one at that, being a writer, yeah. being a journalist, working for a magazine or a newspaper yeah. or a scriptwriter or whatever it is that you do. You making a living from being an author is something entirely different. Yeah. I was about to ask. So that. it's it's very very difficult as. As Lauren said, we are an emerging market. They say that only 500,000 people in this country buy actually buy books. Yeah. Yeah. So that's so it's a very very small market of people that you're looking at to, to yeah. buy your books. And then the chances of exporting your book, unless you've been mm. a runaway success in this country yeah. and you've sold like 20,000 yeah. copies, but will they probably export your book across the world? Mm. So it is difficult, mm. but I, I don't think that people should be discouraged yeah. Yeah, from, from writing that. books be because of that. Yeah. That you will probably need to supplement your income. You will need yeah. to. I'll tell you, my <laughs> first job, um, I worked at an engineering magazine, and it wasn't exactly the, the material I'd want to write about. You know, yeah. combined harvesters, cars, yeah, cars, nuts and bolts, surge. It, Storage plans, <laughs> not serious, and that is, I mean, that is completely not my thing. Yeah. So, you also might have to start off writing things yeah. that you yeah. might. You know, it's not really your thing, yeah. but you you, you, eventually you find get a niche there. for yeah. yourself, and you get Especially. better known, and then you yeah yeah. Okay. Well, ladies, they're right where you are. You're not going anywhere. Yes. Then when we come back, we'll find out which books our authors recommend for you, and a whole lot more. We'll be back after this. Hey, little brother. Do you need the mirror? Yeah. Hey, why are you using Clarisol Ultra Gel Wash? You don't have any spots. Well, that's exactly why I don't have any. Clarisol Ultra Gel Wash helps get rid of my spots. Try it. You'll see the difference in three days. Clarisol Ultra opens block pores, then washes away the germs that cause spots. Maybe it'll work for you, too. Just don't use it all. Clarisol Ultra. Visibly clearer skin in just three days. Guaranteed. Try new Ultra Rapid Action Spot Cream. It reduces redness and spot size in just four hours. Clarisol. Clear skin confidence. Congratulations to our recent winner. Enter now and you could win 15,000 rand. In which country will you find the Sphinx? SMS your answer to 37745. That's 37745 and you could be a winner. It is known for its pharaohs and mummies, the pyramids of Giza and the Sphinx. The mouth of the River Nile is in this country and its capital city is Khan. Got the answer? Enter now before the competition closes. SMS the name of this country to 37745 now and you could win an amazing 15,000 rand in cash. mean crazy cash giveaways on South Africa's hippest love and interactive game show, Crazy. If you've got what it takes, tune in at 3.30 p.m. every Thursday to win. The number to remember is 083-900-2793 and SMS us on 33640 for shout-outs and to win big and play time. To win layers of cash, get those fingers darling every crazy Thursday at 3.30. Proudly brought to you by EGV and then Zubaya. with Crazy Tuesdays. See what the Crazy Inspector Gadget is up to at 3 p.m. Wow! The Frenzy Crew is going bonkers at 3.30. Oh my God, that guitar! <laughs> and Joel the Boy Boy is being his mad self at 4 p.m. <laughs> crazy Tuesdays, only on E. Was always more. Welcome back everybody on the show we are talking about the importance of reading and we have two beautiful ladies and very talented writers in the studio today. Yes, welcome back ladies. It's good to have you still with us. There's still lots we want to find out. Like we were talking about your books earlier and I want to know why should the sisters out there read your books? We'll start with you Lauren. Well, I think what I've always said from the beginning is um, I want my book to incite laughter and um, people to relate to it. And I think if people sort of come back to me, and they have, they've said, oh, I had such a great laugh and I could relate to it in some way, um, I'm so happy. And I think, it would, I think it's, a, it's an easy read, it's a quick giggle, and it's very um, local relevant with Johannesburg. And it also, um, in the relatable part, it's very much about a woman in her 20s growing up, trying to discover you know, life, herself, relationships, that sort of thing. So I think um, it's quite relevant um, yeah. in a personal, geographical, and humoristic way, I'd hope. Very nice. <laughs> I love Lorraine. Well, oh, that's nice. Nice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> she loves it. <laughs> I love it. Um, if you live in Joburg 
and you want to know what's out there, what shops are out there, what spas are out there, what nurseries are out there, coffee shops, bars, clubs, pubs, whatever it is that you want. If you want to discover your city and get to know it better, mm -hmm. whether you live in Johannesburg or whether you're actually in another part of the world or the country and you're visiting, I think my copy, my copy of Chic Josie, The Savvy Style Companion, is actually an indispensable um, book that you should keep in your handbag. Yeah. Everybody. <laughs> Very cool. And uh, Lauren, which books are your top three reads and why? It's so difficult to choose. I must say, put, being put on the spot, you kind of like, you freeze a bit. Um, I've got so many books, but if I were to choose, I would say definitely something by Bill Bryson. Mm -hmm. He writes a lot of travel stuff and it's hysterical. Yeah. And very historically relevant. I love it. So I'd choose probably um, Neither Here Nor There by mm -hmm. him. Um, then Bridget Jones. Okay. Love her. I've got her DV the DVDs. I've got the book. Totally. Bridget Jones always. I really love her to pieces. And then um, I think another notary one that I, I love, which you might not have heard of, is um, Check Please by Janice Dickinson. You know that? Um, oh, yeah. Model. And it kind of, what I love about her is that she really just calls a spade a spade. Yeah, brutally which honest. Which I love. Brutally honest, if not almost kind of cringeworthy, mm. but great reading. And just on, on how she's dated, her life, and what to do, and so on. Which is a nice little sort of handbook on the side. But yeah. I, did, I did enjoy that, yeah. I think I'll look after that Thank one. You. And you? It's a very tough question. If you had to visit my house, you might think that you'd stumble yes. into the library. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, and it's very I've hard to I've seen your book, so it's it, interesting. Yeah. It's a <laughs> cracks beneath the weight of all my books. Um, but on the spot, I think I'd choose Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. He just died, I think, last week, and he was one of the greatest authors of all time. And I think his book epitomized for me when I read it, and the number of times that I've read it since, I can't even count. It epitomized, mm. part, epitomized for me <laughs> the level of sort of teenage angst and sense of not belonging to anything, trying to find yourself in the world. Yeah. That feeling that we all go through at a certain time in our lives. Mm. And then I'm also a big fan of sci-fi. And one of the... Really? Well, yes, I am. Seriously? Yes, yeah, seriously. And then one, wow. of, my, one of my favorite sci-fi <laughs> books ever, ever is uh, Ursula Guern's The Earthsea Trilogy. Oh. It's just... It's not something that a lot of people know about today, but you know, when I was young and growing up, it was everybody was reading it. I highly recommend it. The depth of her imagination, the way that she expresses herself, is fantastic. And then thirdly, I have a young young daughter, so I'm rediscovering all the wonderful books for kids and Dr. Zeus. You know, uh, he's just uh, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> The cat in yeah. the hat to my daughter every night. She loves it, and no one quite puts around together like old Doctor. No, yeah. no one does indeed. Yeah. But now, what are the many? Because I, I know I, I'm a big fan of reading, but for the sisters out there who don't read, what are the benefits of reading out there? We'll ask you, Lauren. Look, I think it just opens your world. I mean, for me, growing up, I'll just say, I didn't have a TV in, in our house until I was 12. My parents were actually quite good about that. I mean, I hated it growing up, you know, everyone yeah. had a TV. But as a result, I read a lot. And it just opened up a world for me. I was an only child as well. So it sort of took me from where I was, maybe in a small little cocooned place, and just opened it out for me completely. And you learn so much. And yeah. you have a laugh, or you, you can sort of, you, you make friends in your books. It sounds, it sounds bizarre, but it just, it grows your imagination and it just feeds your soul. There's just, there's nothing better than curling up with a book and just discovering something. Yeah. Mm. Such a pleasure, yeah. So true. All right, Nikki, I'm going to ask you uh, another question. Do you, does South Africa have awards dedicated to writers? Yes, they do. We have quite a few awards, actually. Um, we've got so many different mediums for writing. So there are awards for writing books. We've got the Sunday Times um, Literary Awards yeah. every year, which I think are quite big. We've got the Booker Prize, which is another big prize. Um, oh. And then, yes, Homebrew, which is a local writers um, that are awarded prizes for their work. Yeah. So there are, I mean, there are awards that you can win. There are competitions that you can enter. I know that magazines often have short story competitions. You can win money and get your story published. There are lots of opportunities. Mm. Even oh. blog, the blog awards uh, as well. Blog oh, really? Award, which is fantastic. Which is, you know, there you go. Yeah. You should start blogging. Oh, it's hit me. Yeah, that's when I first thought, wow, okay. Yeah, I got a feeling. Well, great. Well, ladies, thank much. you so much for joining us. We have gifts for you. Oh, and you. all the best for the future. Thank you Thanks so much. much. We'll that's keep a look out for your books yeah. and your yeah. top three reads. I want to get hold of those. <laughs> Dr. Zeus especially. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, ladies. Thank Thanks you. Best of luck for the future. Thanks, Thanks so much. much.